Today's video is a clip from my membership site from the field.tv. This is the place that I post 95% of the content that I now make. It's all hyper detailed, no clickbait, no catchy thumbnails, no catchy titles. It is all with the intent of delivering high value information to you guys. The last 18 months of me traveling around North America, visiting experts in regenerative and sustainable agriculture, as well as some high tech farms, it's all up there. And all the videos of me developing my new farm are up at fromthefield.tv. Head over there and check it out. All right, Clinton and I started the day uh, at my home and we uh, were cutting these uh, drip irrigation pieces before we headed out to the farm, just made it easier. So we were cutting them uh, 51 feet long, just a little just a little over the length of the bed just to give you options if things move around or whatever. So the way we do it is it's a two-man job and uh, set up an A-frame and uh, one guy grabs the tape, walks out. We got a measuring tape down there. The other guy goes back grabs the scissors and we confirm is that 51 feet yes and then uh, the other guy cuts it and then after it's cut the other guy walks back out with the with the tape and uh, as long as your kid doesn't uh, <laughs> mess around with the roll uh, walk along and basically do the same thing so the two of us just go back and forth and so we just did this for she didn't take long at all it took about 15 20 minutes to cut ourselves um, I think we cut 50 pieces and uh, these are going to go on our beds. So a bunch of things happened up at the farm today. Um, Clinton and I got there a little later because we had to cut those lines. Didn't take long, but uh, we had a lot of things to pack up, actually. A lot, of, a lot of equipment to bring up, irrigation and tools and stuff. Potatoes, and we brought some transplants up. But um, Lorand and uh, Warren were well into... The greenhouses and they basically got that all framed up uh, we had Warren there to do a few other kind of skill related things he was looking at um, Blair's sprayer for his tractor for the orchard uh, Warren I've said this before but he can basically fix anything he's a very skilled trades guy um, so we kind of just use him for that we don't really bother getting him to do farm labor because we're all covered in that regard so uh warren came and did what he needed to do then he took off and um yeah then those guys finished up the tunnel and then i did a bunch of delegating um i got um blair i got him started on burning the uh holes in the fabric for the winter squash with his tiger torch we did a single row down the bed 18 inches apart and then i also got um Clinton going with, uh, I forget her name, it's one of Blair and Lindsay's uh, helpers on their farm. She was helping us a bit today. Uh, they were cutting the um, fabric for the winter squash beds, and then I basically uh, got the uh, ground laid out to put in the potatoes, um, basically put a potato every foot, and then I went with my uh, tree planting shovel and made the holes and then um, passed that task off. So what I what I was trying to do today, which actually worked quite well, is uh, I got started on a bunch of tasks and then I would show that task to whoever. Um, and then I would pass off everything and then so that I could focus on the irrigation because that was the thing that uh, you can't just explain to people really easily. Uh, so I try to all, it's kind of something I always try to do um, on a farm is um, get in there and get doing the, the dirtiest tasks or the, the tasks that need to be done and then pass the simple ones off so that, um, that others can get in there and take over those tasks and then you can jump into the skilled tasks. And so uh, once I got all those guys going on those things, um, I really just focused on getting all the irrigation set up. Uh, we're just focusing on drip right now, not worried about not worrying about installing the wobblers. Um, just getting all the drip down. I'll just quickly explain what I'm doing with my uh, potato holes here. So I'm using my tr my tree planting shovel, and I'm making a hole, and I'm not trying to make too much of a mess. I'm just basically getting the shovel down, and then pushing the dirt over. I'm trying to get really deep, 
and then make a nice deep hole every foot for my potatoes and then uh, then and then uh, from here actually I went and just but I passed this task off and I didn't get it on camera but what, what happened next is um, I got the guys to go and sprinkle some fertilizer in each hole so we're using that 444 guy green sprinkle it in the hole then go through and throw the potatoes down in the hole and then cover them up with some of the dirt not all of the dirt so what my i'm trying a little experiment here i saw a, a, a farmer friend of mine in town do this uh, basically exactly the same thing and then the idea is um you cover the potato with a little bit of dirt like only about an inch and then that grows up and then you can put some of that dirt back further so the idea is you're encouraging the uh, plant when you bury potato greens they will um, actually turn into more potatoes I've done this in my backyard with doing uh, vertical potatoes I'll do a video about that some other time but uh, it's the same idea and it's sort of a less messy way of hilling the potatoes you know the traditional a lot of the traditional uh, farmers will have a you know either a, a, a rotary plow or something like that and that they'll push dirt on and hill the potatoes I don't want to do that because I don't want to mess with the shape of our beds anymore and I don't want to uh, just do any too much soil disturbance and bring up more weed seeds so we're going to try something like this and uh, see if it works for us so next Blair was getting into the uh, making the holes for the, with the tiger torch and one thing I'll point out here is we didn't put our drip lines underneath yet we actually pinned down the middle and then uh, after he burnt the holes we flipped the sides up and then put the tapes underneath just in case he, next uh, this is uh, how I burned some of them most of the which, rest of my uh, day was just do, putting all the irrigation put stuff together uh, right here I'm just uh, installing one of the the zones so these will eventually be two zones but we only need one zone right now um, at each uh, block right so I'm putting I'm putting uh, one valve in here for our drip irrigation and that's got a uh, pressure reducer on the end of it that takes it down to uh, 15 psi and then that's going to be my main header line that goes along and then each subheader connects to that so just putting that in making sure I got Teflon tape on everywhere that I've got uh, some threading and then I just uh, run my uh, half inch poly tube along there and then I'm going to puncture in each um, sub bed head uh, in each one of those and I'll show you what that looks like so at each um, at every at the start of every bed we have the barbed piece that goes in that's punctured into the half inch poly line uh, you use a little one, of the, one of those little puncture tools little uh, yellow tool I have there you puncture the hole and then that barbed piece goes in that's what I'm connecting to right now then I've got another two inch piece of poly that I'm putting on there and then that's a uh, poly lock and then that gets poly locked to each sub bed head which I'm putting on right there and then that's basically um, how the main header line is attached to each bed and then you have your drip pieces that attach to that and so the advantage to these little barb pieces is these are on off um, valves so I can turn off each bed so don't need to bother having an on off for each drip line it's just way too many of those pieces way too many things that you rarely ever use so if I if I want to not use a particular say I only want to have two lines on a bed well then I can just fold over two of the other lines that I'm not using and just put some tape around them or a clip or something like that so yeah basically um, I spent a good chunk of the the day here just doing this sitting on my knees and just putting all these pieces in the good thing about that uh, the good thing about this though is that the other day Lorand and I did all the pre-work so you know I'm not having to do too much here I'm just cutting in a few pieces to get that uh, header line attached and just puncturing in that one piece there and then that's it and then of course attaching my uh, drip tapes to each bed uh, so yeah always a little bit of time on your knees but uh, the, the less you can do the better okay so we're done for the day. We were here for about a total of six hours altogether. Doesn't actually look like we did, we did much, but we did. 
uh, we've got, let's start on this side of the field. So we finished our greenhouse frame. We've got our primary two wires up. That's where our indeterminate tomatoes are gonna go. And those ones are gonna go, uh, some of them will go 18 inches because they're my really big uh, indeterminate ones. And then some of the smaller ones we have we'll do at one foot spacing, but they'll all go in there. We've got the uh, drip is all set up. We've got it on, so we're running the system right now. See a little bit of water coming out of there. So we basically just hooked up the beds we're using. Right now, uh, these are also watering. These are these are going to be squashed. Clinton is going to come here tomorrow and plant all this out. So this zone up until here is running. I didn't uh, hook anything else up in here. And then the end of all of our lines are just pinched off there. That's a three quarter inch poly over top of the half inch poly. So these uh, squash lines here are running. I'll turn that one on. So those are all running. Again, Clinton will come back and plant all these tomorrow. I got to head out of town briefly. And then potatoes are all planted here. So let me talk a little bit about what we did with our potatoes. So I made those holes, did that with my tree planting shovel. And um, I'm just trying a little experiment because I just want to do like kind of a semi hilling. So I made the hole, pushed the dirt to the side, and then only covered them back up with about an inch or two of dirt. And then I will come along later when I see them popping out, I'll come along and just cover them up more. And probably as they go, I'll level these beds out more. Uh, but the nice thing about these holes too right now is they're gonna allow us to capture a little bit more water. The soil is fairly sandy loam up here, so that's good. And so got these zones running here. Got a little bit of rain coming in right now too. And uh, we can see all of these are looking good. They're all dripping well. Whenever I set up drip, I always put the emitters, um, the emitter hole face up. That way when I'm coming along, I can see them. And I like to see it when I'm coming along. But I can see good action happening all here. You can see They're dripping nice. Not happy with this drip product, um, but it's really all I had access to. And it was the only thing I could get with six inch emitters. And so it's an eight mil, which is fairly thin. I, I wish I could get a 12 or a 15, but they didn't have it. So we've got this, so it's working. And um, yeah, so we came, we finished the greenhouse at least the, the skeleton of it. We're ready for plastic now, basically. Oh, no, next thing we're gonna do on that greenhouse is put the channel lock in, and then we're ready for plastic, which we don't have yet. Should get it today or tomorrow. Um, so that greenhouse is, the frame is done. We got all of our potatoes planted, and we got all of our irrigation lined up on everything where immediate crops are going. We got our winter squash beds set up with fabric. Blair burnt those holes. Uh, we got one, row of, of, a, of squash planted. We did these at 18 inch spacing in row, one row per bed. So the rows from bed to bed are four feet apart. And um, yeah, that's it for the day.